I'll just quickly introduce myself. Um, my name is Nick Buxton. Um, I coordinate the Futures Lab, um, part of the work and publicate and do a lot of publications at TNI and have been part of the supporting team that put this conference together. So um, this short session um, is really, as I said, we're about what happens next. Um, and we're just gonna have some very short contributions. Um, as Karl Marx, of course, famously noted, the philosophers interpreted the world in various ways. The point, however, is to change it. And this is certainly at the heart of TNI's mission, which is not just to analyze what's happening, but also to really support the social movements bringing about transformative and necessary change. Um, so in this final session, I'm going to just hand the microphone over to some of the key organizers behind this conference, both for them to share their conclusions, but also the action that we plan to take after this conference finishes. Um, so if uh, so, I'm going to start first with Fiona Dove, who's the director of TNI. Uh, Fiona is a South African born activist who's been director of TNI for 25 years, um, and she's going to just start by acknowledging uh, some of the work and some very brief reflections on the conference uh, that has happened over this week. So over to you, Fiona. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> Struggling with my video there. Um, hi, everyone. And um, just to say that I'm really uh, feel incredibly privileged to have been with you all uh, this whole week. I've, I've, I've been with you uh, for every session. Um, I think it was very timely. We've seen a lot of feedback about how superb it has been. So hats off to the organizers for, for, for that. Um, I think we've heard some brilliant inputs. We've met some brilliant people. Um, Nick kind of stole my quote uh, <laughs> that I was going to, to end with, but I, I wanted to say you know, something else that, um, that I felt came through quite strongly was another one of Marx's um, theses from the German ideology, which was about educating the educator. So I think we've had lots of that um, in this conference as well. Uh, there's been a good balance of theoretical, practical, uh, and even technical with, with uh, Sean's input uh, in the last session. So I think it's been a really good, uh, really good conference. Um, I think there's a lot to synthesize, so I'm looking forward to seeing the videos and, and looking at things again, uh, perhaps having some, some smaller group discussions within uh, our institute to kind of look, look at some of the inputs more. Um, my job really today is to say thank you to everyone. Um, we have had uh, 11 sessions, including this one, over an entire week. Um, people have been... Um, a lot of people have stayed with us for the whole conference. We had 833 people from 83 countries registered, which is amazing. Um, we've had 46 speakers, so big thanks to all of them. We've had fantastic um, and sometimes really charming uh, facilitators, so thank you to them. And um, also, I want to say thanks to the organizations that have been supporting this beyond the conveners, um, and that's the Democracy Collaborative um, and two programs of the University of Wisconsin in Madison, uh, the Jean Monnet European Union Program for the Study of Populism, and the Latin American, Caribbean, and Iberian Studies Program, also at Wisconsin at Madison, and of course, the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation uh, New York office. Um, big thanks to Danielle uh, from TNI, uh, to Patrick uh, and to uh, Pete from uh, Madison, from the, from the Heavens Rights Center. Um, we've had technical support throughout this from Nick, who's facilitating now, um, and Jess, who's been behind the scenes. She's, she's our, uh, our whiz kid on, on Zooming. Uh, and to Sarah at the at the Heaven Heaven uh, Heaven's Right Center. Um, and last but not least, to thank um, Lala, Isabel, and Liz. Uh, without you, this conversation couldn't have happened. Uh, they have been our three translators, and you've been absolutely amazing. So um, huge thanks to you. Um, and I thought, well, these Zoom conferences are always a bit weird, so. 
just so we had the feeling. Um, so thank you all very much. And I'm going to hand over now to, to the team who are going to explain um, what the next steps are uh, with, with this project. So back to you, Nick. Yes, thank you so much, Fiona. And thank you, yes, a, a double thanks to everyone who was who Fiona mentioned who made this possible. Um, I'm now going to pass over to Patrick, who's going to share a little bit about um, one of the big outputs that we hope will come from this conference, the book. Over to you, Patrick. Thanks, Nick, and I won't take long. Um, what, as Nick just mentioned, one of the main goals of the conference is to produce a book, uh, as well as related materials. And the goal of this is to serve as resources for activists and academics globally. Um, the speakers you heard this week um, were asked to write papers that would not simply provide a snapshot of contemporary events and developments, but that would also address general questions that would have strategic and theoretical value, such that the book um, will have long lasting, uh, a, a sort of lengthy shelf life, something that we can come back to and look at and, that, and uh, others as well, again, globally. As I mentioned on the first day of the conference, the most important of those questions are ones that have long preoccupied the left, um, but really remain very much at the center of debate, including the debates that you heard this week. And again, most fun fundamentally, these are the content or the project or vision um, of a future society that the left seeks to advance, but also the kinds of state transformations, the social bases and alliances, and the organized collective capacities and political formations that would be needed to bring about that vision. The papers are in varying stages of development and we will be working with the authors to complete them in the coming weeks, taking into account among other things, the feedback um, and discussions that took place over the course of this week. There's been also been, it's very obvious, a great deal of overlap of themes not surprisingly given how interconnected they are. And I can say for myself that the presentations have given me a lot of food for thought and caused me to think more deeply about aspects of my own paper. Our goal is to complete the book this year in two editions, one in Spanish and one in English. We're currently negotiating with publishers and we already have a commitment from the Latin American Council of Social Sciences, CLACSO, for the uh, Spanish version. And the last thing I just want to do is, the, is to chime in myself and thank, uh, take this opportunity to thank everyone associated with the conference, especially the staffs of TNI and the Havens Rights Center, and of course, the interpreters. So thanks again. Thank you, Patrick. Um, next up, we've got Danielle, who's a fellow at TNI and for whom this conference is, I'm, I'm, I think it was your brainchild really, Danielle, but to share some of the other uh, uh, thoughts about some of the outputs that we we hope to have going forward. Eh, sí, eh, yo voy a hablar en español. En I'm realidad, esta in conferencia no fue idea reality, mía, sino que fue una idea compartida. It Creo was a collective idea, de centrarnos en este tema de the original idea to center on democratic socialism was Pete's idea, and he can explain why we landed on this topic. I'm going to limit myself Pero antes de eso quiero agradecer a todas y todos to los panelistas, las panelistas panelists, y los y las moderadores de, de los distintos paneles, porque somos conscientes que es muy difícil participar en una conferencia de cinco días en tiempo de pandemia, porque todo el mundo, o el padre, o la madre, o el abuelo, o la abuela, o la hermana, o la hermana, Sisters, y tiene que ocuparse no solo de temas de trabajo, sino también de temas de familia, como escuchamos esta semana, el esfuerzo que hicieron algunos y algunas participantes para participar, donde se escuchaba ruido de niños y cosas familiares. Entonces, un abrazo y un agradecimiento inmenso, en primer lugar, a toda la gente que aceptó este desafío y invitación Bueno, muy rápidamente, información práctica, porque en este lado del Atlántico ya es Tarde. On this Son side of the Atlantic, it is almost 10 p.m., so I will be brief. Uh, I'm sure everybody wants to wrap up after five days. 
It's en primer lugar, intense. quiero aclarar de que la página web de la conferencia va a seguir activa. La idea es utilizar active. la web de la conferencia como el principal canal de comunicación para seguir eh, comunicados con las casi 900 personas que se vincularon a este proyecto, incluyendo no solo la gente, la gente que se registró para la conferencia, sino también los eh, casi eh, 50 panelistas y moderadores. Una de las preguntas principales que hemos recibido es qué va a pasar con los videos de la conferencia. Nosotros hemos grabado todo y esto pensamos que es esencial porque sabíamos que mucha gente se iba a registrar para la conferencia, pero que iba a ser muy difícil para todo el mundo participar durante los cinco días y durante los eh, diez paneles que tuvimos. Tuvimos eh, unas cuantas Inyecciones de gente de, de la región Asia Pacífico, pero casi nadie pudo participar de esa región porque en el momento en el que realizamos esta conferencia era la mitad de, de la noche en esa parte del mundo. Sobre los videos, entonces quiero aclarar que la versión en español ya está en la web ya que una de nuestras organizaciones eh, socias, Partner Organization, la Universidad Abierta de Recoleta, nosotros hemos escuchado como panelista de esta conferencia al alcalde, Daniel Jadwe, quien está a cargo de esta iniciativa, ha estado transmitiendo en vivo todas las sesiones de la conferencia en español durante toda la semana. Ellos ya subieron todos los videos en español a su canal de YouTube y en los próximos días van a trabajar so over the past, eh, o tal vez próximas semanas porque lleva tiempo days, en una edición weeks, más profesional time, de los videos tratando de recoger las mejores partes para que sean más cortos también hacerlos más atractivos en términos clips, visuales agregando música, gráfica y otros, eh, otras mejoras de postproducción también la próxima semana vamos a subir los videos de todos los paneles en inglés a YouTube y vamos a incluir los enlaces a estos videos en el sitio web de la eh, conferencia. También vamos a utilizar el sitio web de la conferencia para agregar otra información. Eh, vamos a agregar eh, otras páginas al sitio web, incluyendo información sobre eh, los astras de las distintas eh, presentaciones que tuvimos durante eh, esta semana. Y también eh, gradualmente vamos a transformar al sitio web en un sitio eh, bilingüe en inglés y en español. Por ahora es solo, eh, en inglés. Y eso es importante porque quiero aclarar eh, que nosotros nos centramos en dos regiones del mundo, eh, las Américas y Europa. En un momento pensamos en hacer esta conferencia auténticamente global, incluso mantuvimos el nombre de global en el título de, de la conferencia, pero después nos dimos que en el marco de la pandemia, las barreras del lenguaje, las barreras de los usos horarios en particular, hubieran hecho la organización de una conferencia auténticamente global con gente de otras regiones del mundo, especialmente África y Asia, aún más complicado de lo que ha sido. Pero estamos conversando con eh, amigos, amigas, eh, compañeros y compañeras de otras regiones del mundo para ver de qué manera podemos dar continuidad a esta conversación que iniciamos esta semana, permitiendo la participación más activa de gente de eh, esas eh, Of bueno, eh, from yo dejo por acá y los invitamos a seguir en contacto con todos nosotros, porque como bien lo aclaró Patrick, nosotros nunca pensamos en esta conferencia como una conferencia sino como parte de un proyecto eh, que tiene eh, continuidad We wanted a project that was going to continue con, eh, and otros have relevance que van a in the long term with other contributions that will appear. Um, so now we're going to finally go over to Pete, who was part of the, the Madison team uh, with Patrick and Sarah um, to share some, some final reflections too. Over to you, Pete. Thanks very much, Nick. Um, I was asked to briefly talk about some of the themes that have been raised this week. 
First of all, though, I just want to quickly thank Patrick, Danielle, uh, Nick and Sarah. It's been a real pleasure working with you all. And again to Lala, Isabel and Liz. I just want to let you know that I've had messages from friends in Scotland, England and the US who've been so excited to get to learn from comrades in Latin America uh, who they'd never usually get a chance to hear from. Um, so thank you so much for everything you've done this week. I've found this conference incredibly thought provoking. And the thing that's really struck me is the way every single speaker has explored the different strategic dilemmas that we face in, in different ways. Um, I think Mike McCarthy's point about this yesterday was very well made. So when the capitalist economy is globalized, how do we actually confront that? How do we concretely deal with issues like capital flight? And in places like Latin America and other places uh, where there's dependency on certain sectors of the economy, how do you both use those resources while also trying to transform the economy and move towards social and, and environmental justice. These are real strategic dilemmas. And equally, socialist and working class organizations are mostly organized nationally and locally. So when democratic socialists try to win governmental power, how do we do things at a national and local levels that aren't undermined by the global nature of capitalism? And not only how do we stop it being undermined, how do we go on the offensive to challenge the hegemony of globalized capitalism? And another key dilemma that's been raised a number of times is the relationship between social movements and, and parties. It's been pointed out that movements can achieve things that political parties simply can. But the opposite is also true. Parties are the best vehicles for certain types of change in certain circumstances. So which do we emphasize and when? And all too often, the logic of formal pol uh, politics demobilizes grassroots action. So how do we change that? How do we find ways of organizing and operating that mutually reinforce building radical infrastructure on the streets and in the state? And over uh, overcoming working class fragmentation has been talked about so much. But again, how do we do it? Can we do it through left populist strategies or do we need to focus on rebuilding the strength of working class organizations at the point of production or is it something else? And look, these are just a few things I could go on and on because so many crucial issues have been raised throughout the week. But I'd like to mention something Eric Owen Wright used to say over and over again. And he used to say that when you're thinking about what is to be done, and you aren't constantly thinking about the strategic dilemmas that the left faces, and you're probably not thinking about it properly. We face dilemmas. The left faces dilemmas. That's not a problem. It's only by embracing that, working out what those dilemmas are, and then working through them is through that process that we can advance. And I think that we have made a great start on that this week. But as Danielle has mentioned, we see this conference just as the beginning of a conversation and we want to work with all of you to bring speakers from this conference to events in your area where you live. We want to bring these global issues into your local circumstances so that it helps with the organizing work you're doing. And we want to, we want to organize future conferences. And we're talking to people about the next ones focusing on parts of the world that have been unfortunately not, we've not been able to explore here. So I just want to thank you all again. This conference has given me a huge amount of hope. I've learned so much from all of you, and I'm really looking forward to continuing this discussion with you all. Thank, thank you, Pete. Um, I very much agree. I think, I think the, the willingness of this conference to kind of delve into some of the thorny questions and some of the issues has, been, has just been very insightful and, and just very provocative. Um, and I know will lead to kind of future um, reflections that will be very useful for movements as we move forward. I just wanted to open up just after Pete sharing to see if anyone, uh, we've we just got a few minutes left, but just to see if anyone else would like to um, contribute some quick words. I'm thinking very short comments of about 30 seconds um, and opening first up to the anyone else on the, on who was a panelist. Um, creo que Mabel está abierta compartir algo. I think Mabel is willing to share something, sí. but just keep it short. Primero, bueno, agradecer, por supuesto, esto ha sido una magnífica conferencia eh, que pudimos, a pesar de todas las limitaciones que, que nos da la distancia en los medios electrónicos, pudimos eh, seguir intensísimos debates que nos abren realmente la posibilidad de seguir avanzando sobre pasos más firmes. Si hay algo que, retomando un poco lo que dijeron Nikki y Fiona, retomando al Marx de la acción, 
Creo que eh, estas ideas que nosotros necesitamos construir en diálogo directo con nuestras propias experiencias tienen que partir precisamente de las realidades materiales en las que vivimos y nuestros pueblos viven. Y eso creo que es muy importante. No podemos transformar un mundo desde el mundo ideal que queremos, sino desde el mundo real que estamos. Entonces, este, escuchar los anhelos de nuestros pueblos, los anhelos de las miradas que, que cada necesidad nos, nos informa de los movimientos, es central. ¿no? Es decir, hacia dónde vamos, la justicia climática, se plantearon eh, este, temas interesantísimos que deben ser eh, eh, posibles de encarnar en acciones concretas. Si hay algo que nos enseñaba Gramsci es cómo hacer el socialismo el sentido común de nuestro tiempo. Y creo que si hay algo que nos tiene que convocar, se llamará socialismo para nosotros, los que creemos en, en esa palabra y su vigencia, u otra palabra que querramos encontrar, pero necesitamos encarnar en ese sentido común. Y ese sentido común solo se hace eh, con reflexión, por supuesto que sí, con ideas, articulando esas ideas, y sobre todo con acciones que no dejen afuera ninguna. En cada lugar, en cada país, en cada región donde se esté luchando en contra de las diferentes dimensiones del capital y el capitalismo, son bienvenidas y tenemos que encontrar la forma de hermanarlas, de hacer una casa común, donde podamos discutir entre nosotros, pero entre esa casa común no nos, en, no nos enfrasque en discusiones sobre reforma o revolución, porque la acumulación de reformas sustantivas es lo que nos puede llegar a llevar a, a, a una transformación realmente profunda del sistema. Y superar el capitalismo requiere, sí, ciertamente, lidiar con el poder. Y el poder es hoy, y tiene en, en los espacios este, transnacionales un punto central, pero lo tiene también en los nacionales. Y creo que este, ciertamente las instancias locales son súper necesarias y muy importantes para avanzar, pero que la dimensión del poder nacional todavía sigue siendo central y no lo podemos eludir. Es como el sol, aunque no se vea, está. Entonces eh, esas son las formas del poder que también debemos encontrar cómo lidiar y cómo llegar a él, cómo construirlo, cómo confrontarlo, cómo trascenderlo, pero cómo articularnos para, para eso. Gracias y gracias a todos y todas por esta magnífica conferencia, camaradas. Mil gracias, Mabel. Thank you for that challenge. Um, I think there's possibly a chance for one, anyone else uh, would like to make a final contribution. And then those who aren't a panelist and just want to add any parting thoughts, um, any takeaways, any things that you think we should prioritize, just do add that in the chat in the last, in the last few minutes. Um, it, and if you're a panelist, if you've got your video on and raise your hand, I'll call on you just if anyone wants to make any final, and again, keep it short, but just any final thoughts or comments or takeaways. I see Lucio. Bueno, eh, estoy muy contento por la variedad de experiencias que fueron expuestas, de luchas, de reflexiones. Yo creo que el, el mundo tiene mucha potencialidad eh, crítica y eso se muestra en, en este evento. Eh, me hizo falta quizá la visión general, la discusión sobre las, la, la tendencia eh, global del mundo capitalista y cómo, cómo, cómo ha armado su proyecto, cuál es su proyecto para ir nosotros, sí, con experiencias locales y nacionales, también proyectando una, una unión internacional de lucha. Eh, pero creo que todo es un proceso, son buenos pasos, felicidades y sigamos adelante. Thank you, Lucio. Um, anyone, any final one else? I think in that case, what we'll do, I will... We'll bring this to a close and we'll leave it open the chat for a few minutes. So if you do have any suggestions, do, do add them in there. I know it's late. Um, so really a big thanks to everyone for your participation. It's, as everyone said, it's been an immensely rich conference and series of exchanges, which I know will have positive repercussions in the months ahead. So, so do, as Daniel says, look out for emails from the organizers, keep an eye on the website, do share your thoughts, do feel free to email any of us um, and we'll put our emails in the chat uh, if you have thoughts or feedback on how we can improve conferences like this in the future and, and do stay in touch. Uh, in the meantime, thanks again, everyone. Um, good afternoon and good night. <laughs>